Welcome back to our channel. I'm teacher Cedric, and today we are going to look at some round two questions from the RI exam this year. Let us start with the first question. How many rectangles, including squares, are there without any shaded areas in this shape? Our normal approach would be simply to count how many such rectangles exist. But the locations of these three shaded areas here causes you issue. So it turns out that this is not a very useful approach. Now, instead of trying to approach this question head on, let us try to approach this question from another perspective. Well, let me start by calling these three shaded areas, A, B, and C. And we see that it is much more easier to determine which rectangles contain the shaded areas. For example, this rectangle contains the shaded area A, and this rectangle also contains the shaded area A. And note that these two rectangles here consist of two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. Now let me ask you this question. How many horizontal and vertical lines are there for us to choose from such that the rectangles would contain this shaded area A? Let's see. On the top of A, we have three lines. On the bottom, we have one, two, three, four, five. On the left, we have one, two, three, four, five. And to the right, we have also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are a total of 675 rectangles that would contain this shaded area A. And since this shape is symmetry with respect to this middle line, for the rectangles that contain the shaded area B, there are also 675 such rectangles. Now for the rectangles that include C, we have three lines at the bottom, five lines at the top, seven lines to the left, and seven lines to the right. So there are 735 such rectangles containing the shaded area C. So we simply sum up these three numbers to get how many rectangles containing the shaded area. Mm -hmm. That's not right, because if we sum up these three areas, we would have double counted some of the rectangles that contain both AB or both BC. So we still need to determine how many such rectangles includes both AB. So all those rectangles that include both AB to the left, sorry, to the top, there are three lines, which is the three here. And to the left, we have one, two, three, four, five, five lines to the right, one, two, three, four, five, and to the bottom, one, two, three, four, five. Again, five. So we have 375 such rectangles containing both A and B. And similarly, we can find out how many such rectangles include both AC and both CB. So we need to take away the sum of these three numbers so that we don't overcount. But then once we take away the sum of the three numbers, we still need to add back those rectangles that include all three shaded areas A, B, C. And for those, there are 225 such rectangles. So in total, there are 1,000 305 rectangles containing shaded areas. Now, our final step was simply to take away this number from the total number of rectangles in this shape. How many rectangles are there in this shape? Well, I have eight horizontal lines. I have 14 vertical lines. So I choose two lines from the eight horizontal lines, two lines from the 14 vertical lines to get their total of 2,548 rectangles in this shape. And if I take away this number from this number, I will get the number of rectangles without any shaded areas. Now that solves the first problem. Now the main takeaway of these questions is that instead of trying to approach a question head on, in case when it's a bit complicated, you can always try to approach this question from another perspective, maybe from the other way around. Now let us move on to the next question. 
How many ways are there to arrange seven students A, B, C, D, F, G, such that B is next to C, A and G are not next to each other? Now, to make sure that B and C always stay together, let's first combine B and C. We bunch them together as one. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six students. And since A and G are not next to each other, just for the sake for this moment, let us ignore A and G for now. So now I get four students. I can arrange these four students and there are four P4 ways to arrange them. And now we can't just remove these two students A and G, never put them back. So now it's time to put them back. Now we see that in between the four students here, there are five spacings. And if I put the students A and G at these five spacings here, I can make sure that they are not next to each other. So to choose two spacings from five spacings, there are five C2 ways. Now remember, we haven't solved this problem because I have bunched B and C, but B and C can still switch places. As well as for A and G, once I have chosen two spacings out of the five spacings, A and G can also switch places. So my final answer will be P44 times C52 times two from B and C switching places times two from A and G switching places. So there are a total of 960 ways to arrange these seven students according to these two conditions here. So this is a revision on the bunching method and the partitioning method that we learned in our class. Now that's it for today's lesson. If you want to learn more about the round two questions from RI, make sure you subscribe to our channel, press the like button and share this with your friends. I'm teacher Cedric and I'll see you next time.